Are you confused as to whether or not you need an acoustic piano to learn classical piano properly or whether a digital will do? Well, to be honest, I think it's probably not the right question to ask. What you really need to ask is what piano will work for you. Stay tuned and let me explain why. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do consider subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. I've noticed that many people get really worried about whether they actually must have an acoustic piano to be able to learn piano properly, whatever properly means. However, let's start with the obvious statement. Anything is definitely better than nothing. The main thing really to start thinking about is at what point will the instrument you currently have start holding you back from being able to progress to the level you want to get to? For example, if you just want to knock out a rendition of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or maybe play along with some chords to some of your favourite pop songs, then do you really need a piano at all? Pretty much any keyboard, even with just semi-weighted keys, would do the job well enough for you. However, beyond the very basic mechanics such as moving your fingers, this kind of keyboard clearly wouldn't take you very far as a classical pianist. I think at the very basic minimum, you need something that's got fully weighted keys and what they call a graded hammer action, which is where the keys at the bottom of the piano are slightly heavier to press than the keys at the top. And this now means that we're looking effectively at a proper digital piano or a, an acoustic piano, and that could be an upright or a grand. I think pretty much everybody agrees that you can't beat an acoustic instrument. Certainly you can't beat a grand piano. However, digital pianos are getting increasingly sophisticated. They've got magnificent actions based on real piano actions. Sampling technology is improving all the time and so the quality of sound that they're able to make is also improving. So they are still a very, very good option to consider. However, before getting too fixated on whether it should be digital or acoustic, let's think of some basic considerations. We need to think, how much space do we have? What shape is the room? Where do I live? As in, what country or what kind of house do I live in? And what is my end game on piano? First, let's think about space considerations. Now, a digital piano is far, far smaller than any acoustic piano, simply because it doesn't have any strings inside it. So it can fit into a much smaller case and therefore fit into a much smaller place. So on that basis, if the space you've got isn't big enough for uh, an acoustic instrument, then the decision's already made for you, really, unless you want to move house. However, space is important for more than just the physical size of the instrument. The size of the space has a great impact on what happens with sound in that space. And when you're learning to play piano, just as importantly as learning how to press your fingers on the keys properly, you need to work very, very intently with your ears so that you can hear whether or not you're getting the result you want. Now, I've rented practice studios on various occasions when I've been on holiday and I want to get a few hours practice done. And I can assure you that an acoustic instrument in a small space is just too powerful for your ears. You can't properly hear what's going on. It's just noise. So on that basis, if you've got a very small space, then you might also find that it's not really that practical to be constantly practicing in it because you can't hear properly the sound that's being produced. 
I'm convinced that you'll develop a far better technique if you're able to properly hear what you're playing and therefore having a piano that enables you to turn down the volume to suit the space and then concentrating on generating the full dynamic range that you want at that volume level is essential so that your ears can properly analyze the sound that your fingers are making. Another thing to consider oddly enough is actually the shape of your room. Now I discovered that, especially in the case of a grand piano, it works much less well in a square room than it works in an oblong space. And this is to do with the way sound bounces off the walls. And going back to what I said about the importance of being able to properly hear what you're playing, this can be critical. So if you've got a very small square room, then you might want to rule out an acoustic instrument just for that particular reason. Now let's have a little think about where we live. This is important for more than one reason. The first of these, of course, is the proximity to your neighbours and the people you live with. You'll probably find that if you live in a condominium or an apartment, then this can easily become an issue because a piano is quite loud and if your neighbours can hear it too much then they might not be so pleased. I remember a few years ago I met a piano student who was renting a practice room at the same place as me and she said she had to do it because basically her neighbours had applied for a noise abatement order and she was banned from playing at home. So whatever piano you've got, if you're not allowed to play it, it's not going to help you very much. Of course, even in less extreme cases, you still do need to think about it. If you're going to need to do most of your practicing at mainly unsociable hours, it's probably not a good idea to do this on an acoustic instrument that your neighbours can hear quite clearly. Another thing that's important about where we live is temperature and humidity. I'd never really thought about this until I bought my own piano actually, but you know, a grand piano has thousands and thousands of individual pieces of wood in its action. And wood, as you know, in warm temperatures and humid climates will absorb moisture. In a perfect world, an acoustic instrument really needs to be kept within a decent range of temperature and humidity. I actually had to buy a dehumidifier to keep the humidity level down at home when I bought my piano. And even though it's there, I still can't always keep it within the temperature and humidity range that ideally it should be. Therefore, if you do live in a climate that's got dramatically changing temperature and humidity levels, you might want to consider a digital piano for that reason. Of course, your end game is also important, isn't it? If your intention is to be a top flight concert pianist, then you will need to spend an awful lot of time practicing on a grand piano. Of course, if you are doing this, then the likelihood is you're at some kind of musical conservatory and you'll have your choice of practice instruments to use during the day and maybe a piano at home doesn't actually then need to be an acoustic piano. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I follow Josh Wright Piano TV and his YouTube channel. And he did a video a while ago where he was speaking about the fact he has, apart from his Steinway Model O, which is the instrument he uses mostly, he bought himself a Nord digital piano because after the birth of his daughter, he needed a way to be able to practice whenever he was able to practice without disturbing his young child. If you have somewhat less lofty ambitions and you just want to be able to do all of your piano grades and play largely for your own amusement, then there's no reason that a digital piano will ever become something that holds you back. Ultimately, there is no music in any of the major exam board repertoire that means you absolutely need a grand piano to be able to play it to good effect. And you'll be surprised perhaps to note that if you read the exam guidelines, you can take your grade exams on a digital instrument, provided it has fully weighted keys and it passes the examiner's inspection. So clearly, 
if it were not possible to get a distinction on a digital instrument, they would make this clear in their guidelines, and they don't. Naturally, there are other considerations that will impose their own constraints, such as portability and budget, for example. You know, if you need a portable instrument, then unless you're Vladimir Horowitz and you can take your piano with you everywhere you go, then an acoustic is not really the right choice for you. Budget these days, probably less so. I think with a little bit of research, you'll find that there are good options, both new and used, of all kinds of instruments in all kinds of price ranges. So you should probably be able to find something that fits your needs. Of course, there are instruments these days that they call hybrid or with a silent system fitted to them. And these could also be a great option, allowing you to have pretty much the best of both worlds. Of course, these are fairly modern instruments, so will still come at a premium price for the moment. You can see, I'm super lucky. I've got a grand piano here, but that was only quite recently. In the last place I lived, basically I had my Yamaha Clavinova because the space would have been too small for an acoustic piano and I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it. And even here, I rarely actually play with the lid fully open like this because the piano then becomes a little bit too loud for the room and you can't hear the fine nuances in the sound that you need to study when you're learning. In an ideal world, we'd all love a Steinway Model D to fuel our passion. However, for most of us, this won't be an option and we can still have a very fulfilling piano journey on any decent instrument, be it acoustic or digital, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you're not already, then please don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click on the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.